Hey, pal. Yo. How's it going? Good. Am I there? I hear you, but oh, I there. see you. Okay, cool. Oh, that's awesome. Right. How's it going? Good, dude. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I like the hair today. Yeah, man. I'm, I'm going to get it cut tomorrow. So you're getting the last podcast of this, this dude before I cut it. Oh, hell yes. Or yeah. no. I don't yeah. know. No, I <laughs> So it'll be a necessary cut. Yeah, that's what I said like six months ago, and it's continued to grow. So I don't know. I'm just you rocking along here. I appreciate that. Thank you. I I used to have it really short, but then um, you know, just kind of Corona happened, and I got lazy, and it's kind of looking okay now. So fuck yeah. But anyway, how's uh how's your travels back to LA from Arizona? A good flu. Um, probably got the got the rona um oh no 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 i don't i don't think that no i was just that was a joke oh okay oh all right, all right. <laughs> thanks for the concern but yeah no uh people were masked there's a lot more people on the plane than i had anticipated but um um yeah, it was good good travel back back in the swing of things la's all shut down so it's kind of a bummer to not that i was like going out in az post show anyway although it was yeah. enticing but just to at least know right. it was an option, it was somewhat a little bit more uh, comfortable than being in a place where just they're like, you can't even pee in your own house, man. Fucking, oh, you better yeah. go into the shower, quit using your bathroom. And you're like, oh man, these, these Newsome restrictions are getting out of control. But it's, uh, yeah, yeah, man, it's, um, it's a weird time. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, Arizona doesn't really believe in coronavirus, so it's a totally you different don't. scene here. I can't yeah. imagine what it's like over there with everything shut down. It's, I mean, I, I still, my wife and I, we've seen only each other mostly just cause the family, I have parents and they're older and I don't want to infect them and That's trying to be good careful. Move. Yeah. Yeah. Try, yeah. You know, trying to think about others. So not kill them. Yeah. To, yeah. But yeah, I did see a guy, I think I said this on stage, a guy uh, at Albertsons in, uh, in Phoenix wearing a shirt that said, fuck your feelings. And I was like, dude i think the no mask pretty much we we got that <laughs> like the shirt's pretty redundant and then i saw another dude with a uh sweatshirt uh it's just a skull sweatshirt and then the hat just said fuck on it and uh i was like i wanted to ask him like is that like you're you know in support of just like did were there other hats that had like fucking and you're like i can't afford all the letters but this should let people know what I'm about, or is it like a fuck? Like, probably more of an angsty like fuck. Like, I'm I'm assuming because he had long hair, he looked like a a kid that would probably steal your your candy on Halloween, like bag snatchers. Do you remember bag snatchers? I do. I do. It sounds like a weird uh, '80s cartoon, but it was just shithead kids in the neighborhood that would steal the bags of candy from from uh, smaller, weaker kids. Uh, I got my candy snatched. Uh, like two back-to-back -back halloweens and that sounds was, like uh, a euphemism for losing your virginity as well you got a my bag snatch candy. i got my candy snatched that's how oh I well did. no they they no they 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 molested me but it but then they, and they, oh, took my candy. Okay. they took my candy afterwards yeah it was so i guess it's a double entendre oh, double meaning what either way yeah either way they uh they had hershey kisses that night let's just leave it at that all trick and no treat, essentially. Just <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Oh, man. I, Adam, I wanted to also ask you, because you, I feel like the magnetic force of laziness and depression in this pandemic has been mm. so strong. And it's just yeah. easy with, with losing jobs and staying at home and all that, especially in a mm -hmm. place where people believe Corona is real. Right. It's just, I feel like, especially for comedians, it's tough to get into the swing of things and try and make things work. But you, I know you mentioned on one of your episodes of About Last Night, amazing podcast, by the way, oh, thanks, that man. you were talking about getting tested for ADD because yeah. you thought you might have it. And yeah. just looking at your repertoire of entertainment and talents, you're like a podcaster, actor, voiceover, um, and singer, musician you've got all these different things and and you've been able to develop these things that there there's kind of connective tissue now which is really cool people that you've acted with have showed up on your podcast you right. sing and do improv in your stand-up and um you've been able to just make things work you went to australia 
to film um to film i almost called it little rock young rock close uh, yeah uh, yeah, about about the rock and he him being younger, which I'd love to talk about in just a sec. But yeah, you were in quarantine for two day two weeks there. You are still doing shows, but you're making sure that it's safe. You're getting tested. You you're taking that extra effort to make sure that you're continuing to thrive. And I was going to ask, what's your motivation? Like, how do you wake up and be like, you know what, I'm going to do this and actually do it? I mean, it's truly out of necessity of not being i mean even just today like my day started pretty early and and uh it's just i i'm not good with downtime i uh even my girl and i were trying to scroll through to find something to watch the other night and it was just like was just so bored i was like i was like man do all movies and tv suck right now or am i just so not interested in that and i'm uh you know i think being you know, confined to a certain spot and having entertainment like that at your disposal and more time to kind of rummage through has made it more of like a, I don't know, I was more excited to do that stuff when I had less time for it. Now that I have more time for it, I'm just like, not even about it. But I, yeah, the ADD thing came from just, yeah, I, I've always, even if I'm, you know, if I'm doing a podcast or doing a show or memorizing lines, I'm all in on stuff, but it's if there's something that I'm doing and I, uh, you know, can have multiple windows up, I'm going to be doing that. I also yeah. have a very disorganized way of organizing my life. It's definitely organized chaos as far as, you know, I don't use the iCal or anything like that. It's like I write kind of shit out in an email for the day of what I have to do. I also just have a mental memory of things and and just know when I have to do the real important things. And then like, even tonight, I know I have to lay down some voiceover auditions before tonight for tomorrow. Yeah. But I just know that all the way in the back of my head. And I just kind of pocket away, like, all right, before the end of the night, like knock those out. And I just remember because I, I don't know why, but that's just how I do things. And things fall through the, cr uh, the cracks sometimes, but um, you know, like a friend's wedding or a, a, a birth of a, of a niece right. or something like, you know, but stuff that doesn't, you know, that you can the bullshit out about. The bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. No. Uh, um, but uh, yeah, I, especially there is a need. I think everyone felt it when things started to become apparent, they weren't going to pick back up right away in like May uh, right. or even April that it was like, all right, like you definitely develop this sense of fight or flight of, okay, am I going to go out of my way to create more content and to really challenge myself to be a little bit more, uh, in control of, of putting up stuff on all fronts, like more digging through, uh, you know, old stand up things to find clips from, you know, a bunch of those crowd work clips that I put up that'll be on the uh, crowd work album um, that I found from a, a week in Vegas, uh, you know, um, a year ago. And it was 14 shows that I just hadn't sifted through. And so I found a bunch of great stuff from there to, to put up and then keeping the podcast going and, and, uh, other just goofy sketch thing, just, you know, trying to keep busy and, and, um, you know, I guess just keep trying to accumulate people to, to follow. I think there's more of a, uh, focus on content for people that aren't in the business too, because it's just, they're even more needing an escape and a distraction and something to, to, you know, laugh at. And so, uh, that's not like straight up Netflix, Amazon, YouTube things. I think people are also just a little bit more um, excited about just scrolling through their phone, looking at stuff, which is why I think TikTok has become so popular, but which I still haven't totally, um, I'll post Harness clips and stuff on it. Yeah, up. I just can't, I've done a few stupid dances, but I can't dance anyway. So I mean, I've got like four moves. That's not true. I can, I can dance. It's got like four moves. Okay. I think if you, can, you can truly do dance. Like, look, if you challenge me to a dance competition post podcast, probably, I'd probably say, hit me back up in a couple hours after I down a bottle of wine and, you know, <laughs> just <laughs> fucking put on some comfier shorts. Like, you know, I dance as well as like when you see like a fat kid on the Jumbotron at a baseball game and he doesn't know that he's on it and then he looks up and sees himself. Oh. That's, by the way, the most vulnerable moment that any human can experience because it's truly like, you go from not from thinking you're just a regular douche at a game to being the f center of attention and nobody's prepared for that every yeah. now and then, like yeah. every now and then you'll see, a, you know, it's usually so a kid's just like, Oh, 
And then it's like, and they're just fucking flailing and jumping around and just doing all crazy kid shit. Every now and then you'll see a kid that's, or a, a girl that's probably like, I don't know, 26, 27, maybe even 23. She likes, you know, I'm just casually like looking at this and she just looks, doesn't do a double take, just like knows the camera's on her. You know, she's just like, yeah. <laughs> you know, and just fucking turns away and then she turns back, maybe back and gives like a, a wink or something. Wow, I just like a double wink. What if that's how you found out I can't wink? And I was like, and she just winks with the camera. Right. And you're like, dude, one wink is how a wink is. And I'm like, no, no, it's a blink. And you're like, oh, well, that's a blink then. That's not a wink. So that hot girl then knows the camera's on her and she, she, she eye fucks the camera. Those people we got no time for on the Jumbotron. You want the kids that can't dance, that are, right. you know, creating funny for the group. Um, anyway. That's right. You, you also had a good bit on the, about the kiss cam. And I was thinking about it. And the kiss oh, yeah. cam is definitely like mistletoe times a thousand. Because if oh, you totally. get caught on the kiss cam, it doesn't matter who you are, where you're from, what you did. You got a kiss. Yeah. I just saw one that was, I think it was a fake video, but it was like the boyfriend didn't want to kiss the girl. And so she turned to the guy next to him and he gave her a smooch. And then oh. he got up and he got up and left. I'm pretty sure it was staged. It looked a lot of those things sometimes. You it's know. just like wrestling now. It's yeah. all, it's all fake. When I went with uh, Brad Williams, we sat courtside for a Laker game and, and I was like, all right, Brad, we got to go over some some uh, things that might come up during this game for us being so close. I go, first of all, kiss cam. He's like, I'm in. I was like, great. <laughs> no need for tongue, but as Glad long as got we're that settled. Yeah. As long as we're both on the same page, as far as providing the stable center with a moment and something to remember, he's like, for sure. And then I was like, great. And then I was like, dance cam. And I was like, do we choreograph something? Do we just let it happen? He's like, I think we just let it happen. And then, uh, you know, it, the, uh, the place went nuts because Brad started dancing courtside and I just sat and videotaped and just kind of fist pumped. And everybody was like, why didn't you dance as well? And I'm like, cause and I was sitting behind him cause he stepped up on the uh, court. And I was like, because nobody's like, Hey, who's that guy dancing behind the dancing dwarf? Like it's, <laughs> unless there's, unless there's more dancing dwarf, there's no way to also gain attention from that moment. So I'm videotaping That's and the whole stadium starts to kind of, or the arena starts to kind of build with, anticipation because they haven't cut to him on the big jumbo yet but everyone can see that he's dancing everyone in the arena sees this little person dancing courtside and is freaking out and then finally they cut to him and the place erupted like the lakers won the champion it was crazy and then afterwards it was the closest thing i'll probably ever witness to walking around with bieber or a beetle because every third person stopped him People recognize him oh. from comedy too, but everyone was like, dude, yeah. great dance, great dance. We met Chris Pratt. We did a whole podcast about it right after because uh, we ended up, I was wearing a Sonics jersey uh, and Seahawks hat courtside because I was just looking to make a statement. And yeah. uh, <clears throat> we see Chris Pratt courtside and I was like, we should talk to him, go see if he wants to get on the podcast. He's from Seattle. I'm wearing the Seattle decked out and stuff. Yeah. We walk up as we start walking towards him. And again, we did a whole podcast about if you just look up Adam, Brad, about last night, like post Laker game. And we walked towards uh, him at courtside. And then all of a sudden, as we get close, his conversation ends and he just starts walking towards the bathroom, towards the tunnel. So now we, I'm just like, just keep going, just keep going. So we follow him back there. Now we're outside the bathroom. And I'm like, shit, what do we do? And Brad's like, fucking, I got this. So Brad goes into the bathroom. Brad's using the small urinal. Brad stands next to him and goes, wouldn't you guess it? You're using the midget urinal and the midget walks in and then Pratt <laughs> turns around, starts laughing. And he, I guess he was like, I, this is like one of those Southwest <laughs> airlines want to get away moments. And, uh, and so then Pratt came out, Brad and him, him were joking. I'm standing there in Seattle gear. just like, Hey, what's going on? And uh, I should have had like a, you know, we'll fuck Chris Pratt t-shirt or something. And, and, uh, and so then we started chumming it up and I got his number and we were texting during the game and, trying to lock in a pod date and did for a little bit and then just radio silence, but maybe down. Uh -huh. the but, uh, but he was super cool and uh, talked to us about Jurassic world was about to come out. So we were trying to get him for that. Nice. And, uh, nice. and then, Oh, so Brad, the, the dancing on the jumbotron happened about 10 minutes after that. And then he was texting me being like, that was fucking unbelievable. Like definitely keep in touch. Like, you know, yeah, it was, it was, a, it was a, a crazy night, but that's just goes to show you. It's like, you gotta just, go for it like brad and i had that between us we were, we were just always down for the down for the cause to to create a moment out of nowhere you know 
That's incredible. That's a perfect example of just going for it. And I think yeah. you also on one of your episodes of About Last Night, you were talking about how you kind of just went for it with The Rock on tagging him on one of your posts. He liked it, followed oh, yeah. you, yeah, went yeah. into his DMs. You guys started chatting. That's pretty incredible too. Yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's, I don't want to say that's how I got on the show, but it, I, it's how I got on right, his radar. Right. It helped. Right. I mean, you know, I had to audition for the, um, and I'm sure they'll announce it soon what part I, I uh, am playing, but it um, it definitely helped. Uh, and that's another reason why I definitely attribute the extra, you know, um, attention towards being active on social media during this time. I, d I mean, it's a thousand percent attributed uh, or the, the connection with The Rock because of that, because I just was in this mindset of like, posting jokes and doing stuff. And so when I would see, when I saw that uh, picture that said Gwyneth Paltrow's uh, vagina candles sold out in like 10 minutes, that was so interesting and funny to me that I just was like, nah, oh. again, in the mode of just putting shit up and always trying to be looking for something to, to, you know, uh, make out of something. And just, I was like, Oh, there's an opportunity for a joke. Post that thinking, you know, what's a guy equivalent that would make a ball scented candle. I was like the rock for sure. Uh, just like a guy, <laughs> yeah, a guy that 100%. people would actually buy it. I'm like, who's the most doodly dude right now that's so likable universally? Where truly, there's something for everybody. Whether it's his movies and uh, you know, Fast and Fur Furious, his kid movies with Jumanji and and you know, Game Plan and, and just so many action films. And he's got Tooth his fairy. TV show, the Tooth Fairy. Yeah, he's got the, um, you know, he's got his tequila. He's got uh, you know, now the XFL. He's got. Um, uh, fucking um Dude, what's oh it the God. uh the nbc the titan games um and uh it's just there's there's something for everybody so so yeah tagged him in that and then he commented on it and then started following me and then we just started chumming it up and and uh exchanged you know numbers and you know chatted a, a fair amount and uh yeah it's just dope he sent me a, a nice little message the other day and um about a bunch of stuff and Hopefully, I think we're going to do an IG live when the show comes out in February, which will be cool. Nice. Because <laughs> uh, he's got 202 million followers, dude. So <laughs> Maybe I'll pick 202 million. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. That is insane. That's crazy. Hey, look, I know you said you had a hard stop at 530. So we can oh, no, no. I'll give you a half hour from when we started. That's fine. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. Cool. Um, I was also going to ask about your crowd work album oh, yeah. i'll take it from here yeah, because yeah. the last time that you were on the pod i was lauding you about how good you are at crowd work you're the best i think i've ever seen and oh my god I've you seen, need to watch more people i feel i've like seen I'm a lot good. no no you're 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 pretty amazing and i mean i've seen i've seen uh shit i think since the pandemic started i've had like 50 60 comics on here so i've watched a lot of specials done a lot oh, cool. of research i also dug deep i saw your i reminded me of the dancing that you were talking about your dance moves i think you were on late night with scott ferguson you were showing the all up oh, here craig, dead down craig here ferguson. craig yeah yeah oh oops, who's sorry. scott I ferguson of, i was thinking of his brother scott ferguson it's earlier in the night yeah oh gotcha yeah, yeah. No, is I'm that kidding. is there a real uh, no no oh okay. scott I just totally fucked up his name. And now we're, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're, we're lingering in that. So you didn't, but no, you didn't grow up on, who did you grow up on talk show wise? Uh, my parents didn't let me watch talk shows. They thought it was too naughty, but Jay Leno wow. was on and David everybody Letterman. let their kids watch Jay Leno. He was so clean. Cause he was just like, you know, they, uh, you know, he had some, a new study came out. Bennett, apparently there's um 42% of women like sex after dinner. You know, there's 42% of women like sex after dinner. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, with it's called with Ben and Jerry's, and then everyone's like, "What?" You just say the women want to fuck their ice cream? Yeah, pretty much. The Google it all over here, yeah. but it was always like clean, punch in, punch out, nothing too right. risque. Um, I was a big Conan guy, Conan and Letterman, but Ferguson I grew to love because, and that's why doing his show was so cool. The only couch I've done because he he just truly rips up the note cards and just wings it. Um, yeah, it, it was pretty awesome. And you won it as well. I don't know if that's yeah, a yeah. past participle, but yeah, it is. you did a great job. Thank you. Uh, but I was just going to say, you're a crowd work. And I also got to see you on Sunday at Stand Up Live. And you're going to yeah, come yeah. back 
uh december 25th through the 27th was it yeah i think it and yeah i think we might do the weekend or just the shows on christmas still not that decided yet but yeah it uh that was a really fun show that that still had a lot of uh, some good crowd work moments you didn't get to see all the music stuff but you saw that before i think yes yes um, i did i did, we did uh hilarious. my buddy jeremy with the guitar we did all the improvised musical crowd work we just did friday and saturday um but i've got you know i had a buddy tape uh all the shows except for sunday with um three different cameras and really capture some good stuff and and i'm debating cutting together and trying to see if i can you know find a place to put that hour maybe on comedy central's youtube or all things comedy's youtube and and just nice. get up an hour like that that looks great and sounds great during this time but we'll see um or maybe or maybe try to you know do it again in december and, and capture something better there but um yeah that was a that, what was what was there was something at, on that sunday show that was really uh stood out there was a very drunk group of people. I think all the men had beards. Oh, the beard guys. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Except for one. I, I forgot what his name was. He Alan. was kind of, yes, Alan. He was kind of a douche. Kind but... of a douche. Yeah. Well, he was just talking the whole time. So I yeah, yeah, do that yeah. thing where I, I don't know if you could feel it or saw this moment, but you know, I always try to give people an out and give them an opportunity to like pick up on the fact that like they're being distracting. So I stare at them a lot and then, uh, talked to him like I did and I think took care of it squashed him in a way where his buddies had a good time where I wasn't being entirely abrasive to make him feel like he was um you know less than but but needed to maintain control and then he kept talking and then there was one moment where I just straight up was staring at him while I was doing the bit I almost couldn't even hear myself talk because it was like abnormally long I don't know if you saw that it was probably a good 12 seconds okay where I didn't because you know I play the room pretty fairly I feel like and when I'm talking and uh and I think that just comes from all the probably theater and stuff in high school of just having a knack to, to, you know, how you do that. Some people not, cause I'm not uh, that physical on stage, but I, like, I feel like that's always been probably from the theatrical background of just having a sense of playing the room and, and keeping, making everyone always feel like they're, uh, you know, included and don't have a bad seat, you know, but, but I just stared at this guy for about 10, 12 seconds and then he looked at me and then he like looked away and then looked back. And then I think he could feel that I was just staring at him and then just was like, and started like looking down and then, and then he talked a little bit more and then he finally like let up. And I think I had to go back to him one more time, but that whole group was super, I mean, talk about it. Just dudes, dudes. I mean, full on yeah. beards. I think they sell beard oil is what they do. Their guy hit me up and he was like, even today, uh, post a little story. And he was like, please tell me you're growing that fucking beard out, dude. Oh was, my God. Oh, you're not kidding. So. I thought this, was, I thought it was a joke. They no, really... no. And they, and one of them had like a, like they, they said like their son was like one of the, what was it, there when it was like 16. And I was like, what? And they pointed to him. This kid looked like he was 40. I was like, there's, he must have been joking. But then another guy came over and said, like, yeah, he's 16. And I was like, what? Oh. I was like, well, he shouldn't be here. And, and then they laughed weird like they were joking. So I'm sure they were. But yeah, that, it, point being our sensibilities were just way off like yeah. like one of the guys here's <laughs> they you know when people do things and you go yeah like if i were to guess what the, what are the top three things you're gonna do in this moment based on how you look this would have been all three one of the guys with the beards is standing at the table talking to us and then his buddy comes up behind him and just starts simulating like he's butt fucking the guy and nobody was like whoa 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 everybody was just like yep Mike, of course, that's what you are doing because right. look how, look in the mirror. Like you're, and you're just like such a, this is like, and that type of stuff. I remember even in high school, like guys used to like fake hump. And I was always never something that like was comedy to me or even uh, there was a kid in the basketball team who was like six five, two forty, 240. And he would, when kids, freshmen, we, this was like when you were juniors and seniors, he would, right. uh, he would, when kids were showering with their swim trunks on in the uh, shower, he would get buck naked and tackle them and like oh. simulate humping them. And it was hysterical. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> they were clothed enough. He didn't ever get like, you know, there was an actual no. There was um, no penetration or no, yeah, even close. No. It, yeah. it was just all a funny goof, <laughs> you know, looking back. <laughs> that's probably why he, uh, you know, doesn't still live in the state. You know, it's probably not the only reason. I <laughs> not think by also, his choice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but that type of stuff was also just silly. And, and 
not even the fact of like, oh, it's funny that a, a young kid's getting tackled by an older kid in the shower. It was also just certain things you haven't seen yet in life. And so you don't even know how you're going to react to that. Like, I don't even know that was a possibility to see at 17. Uh, another a 17 year old tackling a 15 year old in the shower. Like you're just like, but, and not for, not for anything, you know, um, that, uh, that would be like, you know, put them behind bars, just a goof. Um, and the right, kids would right. laugh too, probably nervously and probably like, you know, cause they were like, probably. if I don't laugh, something bad probably will happen. But, um, I, yeah, a laugh's a laugh the, though. In the, this is the type, and this kid, by the way, was a sweetheart, like the type of kid that, um, uh, so it was never with uh, any malicious intent. Like he's the type of kid right. that would, that, uh, you know, never forgot your birthdays and would just went for the laugh. Um, got it. You know, he like, committed, uh, he really committed. Oh, dude, it, at, at basketball camp, he would light his pubes on fire in front of, like, other teams and um, as, like, a goof. And, and Oh, my God. Uh, it's just a terrible smell. But everybody got like a kick out of it. Like a smoked sausage, for sure. Yeah. Holy I shit. Don't, I don't want to say his name, but if people hear this and they want to know, hit me up and I'll send you his uh, the link to his <laughs> Facebook page and you can blow him up. Um, he, yeah. Oh, man. But, yeah, man, but the, uh, but the crowd work on um, this whole weekend was, was pretty fun. Arizona's always got a good, especially stand up live, a good setup for, um, you know, you don't feel too far away from people. Obviously, people were, you know, a little bit um, more distanced out, but uh, right. But there's the stage is like the appropriate height to not to feel too far removed from people. Um, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, man, yeah, it is. Cool. It's like three feet, three feet high, so it's not too high. You don't right. You're you're really close. Yeah, that's true. That's true compared to like yeah. some of the other clubs out there. How'd your uh, girl like the show? She liked it. She loved how you called her out for going to the bathroom to take a shit. I'm yeah, you were so, it's just like such an, I mean, and then once I saw you, I was like, oh, bummer. But, oh, yeah, we were pissed the whole night. No, no, it was funny. She, she really did. And I wasn't being sarcastic. She thought it was funny. So, okay, good. Yeah, yeah. She had yeah, a great we had time. A, we had a couple songs about that, I think, on Friday, where this one guy went up to go, and Nelson, he was gone for like, about 15 minutes and we ended up some girl ended up timing him that's how we because he you know his wife said he'd gone up to go to the bathroom and we were like this is she's like he said pee we're like it's too long for a pee <laughs> and, then I, she's, and then she's like she's like i don't she's like he'd tell me if he had to poo we're like why she's like he just does we're like mm -hmm, gross and then uh <laughs> and then we ended up calling him and he was like outside smoking and and uh i pretend to be one of his buddies and yeah. And uh, say like, where are you? And he started like venting about his wife, and she's like right there in the oh, room. Shit. Oh yeah, it was a it was a whole thing. But it, the audience was eating it up. And then he came back in, and we did a whole thing with it. Yeah, it was it was pretty great. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. That's so cool. I can't wait for you to come back too. That'll be is it stand up live too, or CB yeah. live, or yeah, yeah. Okay. We'll see. Nice. We'll see how it holds up, man. Everything's in in you know kind of flux right now, but I think yeah. If 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 uh, the cases, you know, can go down a little bit, or um, then then the shows will probably hold up. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Awesome. Well, before we go, I wanted to do some advice with some questions some fans brought in. Let's First do it. question is for you. So on the on should they all episodes, be for me? They well, they we're gonna answer them together. There oh, are questions gotcha. that they found on Reddit, but this one's specific for you. So on the oh, episode. Great of about last night with Nicole Arbor mm -hmm. said that you would want uh, your own, or you want your own cereal, your own shoe and cologne. Have you thought yeah. about what the names are going to be? Great question. Cereal. Look, well, cereal is a, uh, that's a big one. I almost feel like that's sure. that one matters the most because shoes, you know, Hassan Minaj, uh, just came out with a shoe i don't know if it's actually for sale on on racks but he's been sending um close buddies of his uh shoes that he made with a company and they're pretty dope so oh. and it sounds pretty big time but that just uh a cereal i haven't seen any comic with their own cereal i guess is the point i'm trying to make so that to me is really why you would be groundbreaking in that department um i know that it would be Fair. like fruit flavor like I'm a big Frosted Flakes guy, but I love me some Fruity Pebbles. So if we can combine mm. the consistency of the Fruity Pebbles to get a little soggier in the milk, Frosted Flakes take a little bit more time to kind of get wet, you know? That's what she oh. said. 
Um, but um, that's what Tony the Tiger said, actually. And that's why they had to change it from your wet to their great. They're like, Tony, dude, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> take it down a notch. Yeah, right. take easy, it down a notch. Easy, Tiger. <laughs> okay. You're wet from eating the Frosted Flakes. No, dude, you can't just. <laughs> Our demo is kids. Oh, right. Uh, so, um, so Cinnamon Toast Crunch, I also enjoy. But I think, like, I think Brad came up with like ray flakes at one point or um oh okay or Ad- atomos is pretty good but but then you're just oh. like piggybacking on on you know names that already exist so yeah you have to get true. real clever maybe quick fat uh quick quick fat um you know to harken back to my my uh quick fat basketball days maybe like like quick quick fatty like fattios quick fattios spaghettios i love that name so maybe quick fattios or quick quick uh quick fats i don't know quick yeah. fa- oh quick fats that sounds like a type like a polyunsaturated monounsaturated totally quick fat yeah but again i know i there'd be there'd always be a toy inside because i i i don't think that's what she said as well i'm not sure what's that that's what she said as well but yes there's definitely yeah. a toy yeah she did say that <laughs> she's a freak. but uh so, yeah, and then you gotta, Tony, get, that, and then you gotta get a mascot you gotta get a fun uh cartoon mascot that's huge you know oh hell yes hell yes the yeah, shoe I, uh, I, so the shoe's probably third in the list and then cologne you know um uh, the cologne would be something silly like i don't know like um you know eau de Ray came to mind really quickly but instead of elegant that sounds almost a little yeah trailer park like it'd be fun oh. just to name a cologne like fart but have it be so good like, you know what I'm oh saying? Oh my God. Spray just have it, Yeah. Cause it's almost like, I used to just joke about how if a band's name, it doesn't matter what they're called. As long as you're good, people will still buy tickets, you know? And so same thing with true. cologne, if it's an amazing smell and gets popular enough, it doesn't matter if people are like, you know, you know, fart yeah. by Adam Ray, you know, in some really mysterious black and white commercial. Um, oh my God. I hope you do do that. That'd that be great. sounds it also sounds like a terrible idea. I think obviously nobody would buy it, but it well, does I sound mean, exciting white, to. Oh, I was just gonna say white girl rose. I think that was a thing that. Well, uh, I guess fart sounds a little more uh, like something you don't want to spray on your body purposefully. Exactly, I know, but that's why the true gangsters would have that because it's like, <laughs> oh wow, this guy's going out of his way to spray fart on himself before the date. Wait, white girl rose. That's a flavor that already exists. I think that's a brand by uh, the Fat Jew. I think he his name oh, is. Oh wow! All right, I'm the, yeah. Good to know. So I don't know, but anyway, so that, those are good. Fart cool. by Adam Ray, and for the cereal, I forgot all quick, of them. Quick already. Fatios. Quick Fatios, I like that. And then the yeah. shoes. The shoes, um, I think, would just be. I'd probably hit up Sean Kemp and see if we could somehow do some sort of uh, some some spinoff from his kamikazes that I had in the sixth grade because those were dope. That's beautiful. Yeah. I like that. Awesome. Uh, well. But maybe with like Hanukkah colors, like blue and white instead of green and black like he had. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. Okay. I can see that. All right. Well, we've got one question a fan, a fan sent in from Great. Reddit. So Great. we can try and answer that one. Let's do it. It says, um, do I need professional help? I'm a 23 years old guy. I've noticed a disturbing thing about myself. I enjoy watching videos of wild animals eating praise like snakes swallowing live frogs. It's embarrassing, but I find them arousing. Am I a psychopath? Yeah. I'm scared. Yeah, for sure. And you should be, and you are. And um, <laughs> yeah, man, I mean, I don't, look, you're not alone because we all enjoy a good animal attack video, but more of like an old man running across the street getting chased by a cheetah in a cul-de-sac. You know, like, it, it, like right. you scrolled ahead, you saw a, an image that, show the guy on the fence and the cheetah not getting to him. So you know it's going to end favorably with right. no, uh, you know, massacre. So it's more fun to watch. The people that seek out the real violent ones um, of people getting their heads ripped off by sharks or, uh, you know, beavers just, you know, nibbling away at people's urethras while they're sleeping. I don't know if that's out there, but that seems I like did hear David Attenborough did say that. Yeah, he talked about if that. If he on didn't, this kid probably has the link to that video. The, so when you're watching like the snakes eating stuff, that's just, I don't know. That's, that's not, you know, I don't think, uh, 
again, I would want to know how many videos a day he's watching for how many hours. Of course, of course. Is it like when he wakes up, is he starting the day with this type of violence or is he going to bed with it? Either way, I don't think you should be bookending a day around snakes swallowing anything. And that's all I'll say about that. That's an inspirational quote. That should be the Instagram cover of this episode. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's beautiful. Yeah. All right. The, the last thing before we go, Adam, um, I have a segment here called Positive Spin because a lot of times bad things happen to us and then we start to think negatively about mm -hmm. it and we don't start to think positively. So we try to train, I'm trying to use this to train our brains to think of things positively when they come at us so that we can problem solve more easily. Okay. Does that make sense? Is Let's that stupid? It. Okay, oh, I got cool. it. it. All right, Adam Ray, you wake up and you realize when you start to speak that you're not speaking the same. You've got an accent. So in this scenario, it's going to get worse and worse. But in this scenario, you have an Australian accent. Yep. Positives? Great. The positives are fucking girls love accents. Right. They love that right. accent. Hemsworth, Jackman, even Russell Crowe when he's throwing phones. Um, everyone's on board with that accent. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's harmless. It's attractive. Uh, chances are with that accent, you're just going to have a better body because Australian men, I think just have better bodies than we do. They don't even yeah, have yeah. the hashtag dad bod. They just have hashtag bod bod because it's just like, this is how we look all the time. We wake up, we can, you know, we just think about abs and things just start growing on our bodies. Um, you know, I think you know more about creatures and the indigenous uh, life that is floating around this planet, whereas people see like, you know, most Americans, I'd say, have the, uh, you know, know about like five different animals, right? Like bear, dog, cat, horse, fucking, you know. Tiger. To see, I even blanked on a fifth. Yeah, so, I, I, I helped you out. It's okay. Um, so, yeah, so a lot of positives to that. That's good. Yeah, I get that was an easy one. All right, next, transatlantic. I don't know if you know what that one is. Yeah. Oh, okay. That, yeah. That's uh, positive to that's that is um, look. There's a lot of positives to that, and I think you know you could start us off with one of them, and then I'll just kind of piggyback yeah, on there. I think I think everyone would pay attention to what you're saying if you're just like, hey, and another news, I have an erection. Then people are going to understand, okay, Stefan is here. He's hard. He's ready to go. Yes. Uh, my, I think my wife would pay attention to me more in bed if I spoke like that. Yes, oh, baby, yeah. that's harder, harder. So I think oh, that, that might that's be right. Like, yeah, yeah. I think that accent, yeah, that accent is definitely good for foreplay. Definitely. <laughs> um, definitely if you're uh, trying to talk a kid out of watching more snake eating bat videos whatever the fuck he was watching that accent's yeah. just got a lot of positive connotations to it you know if you uh you know if, if you're telling somebody you just like while they were sleeping you coughed in their mouth and gave them rona do that accent for sure yeah um, sorry gave you a little germ see there you go oh see? i think i turned into mafia i don't know Boom. what happened there all right <laughs> last last one uh pirate pirate's always good pirate is uh the pros of pirate I think again, like Australians, girls are a little, they like the bad guy, right? They like, they like the guy that sounds yeah. like, like he's a, might steal, but, but he's, uh, you know, has missing an arm or a leg at some point, not a, not a comp you know, like a guy that's, I don't know, he can talk to birds. He's, he can swim. He's, uh, got a boat. Um, lots of friends. He's a socialite. Um, the teeth is where you're going to come and do a little bit of a roadblock, which is what she calls his teeth because he hasn't brushed <laughs> them in six years. Pirates don't, but that's like part of the allure of a pirate. Is it like, you know, right. I don't have dental, you know, or whatever. It's like, <laughs> but I've got, uh, I've got, I don't have dental, but I've got a solid case of mental uh, health. Oh, sh if you said disorders. it in pirate, it yeah. would. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, no, no. So, but again, right. they like that. Like, he's like, I don't have dental, but I've got mental health disorders. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pirates always, Beautiful. I feel like, you know, are DFW down for whatever, but, but uh, not a guy you want to like watch your kids or be your designated driver. Oh, no, no, absolutely not. They're always but, distracted, always looking for totally. the booty. But they'll and, be able to uh, find like the strip club that's open till 4 a.m. in Vegas, not just two. 
you know triple x marks the spot as they yeah. say hilarious so, dude <laughs> boom <laughs> boom goes the dynamite bring you just brought us home uh, yeah, I think uh, that's a great place to end. Adam, thank you so much for joining. Dude, can I just I, throw I, three fingers? I just did, I was going to do peace <laughs> and then I was going to do like fucking that. And I don't even like Star Trek, but I just fucking, I just went like, dude, what? I'm going to, dude, I'm going to start that. Three fingers is the new see you later. It's the pirate code for. It's, although then I'm uh, going to meet somebody who's got like actually three fingers and be like, fuck you, dude. <laughs> I'm back. Like, what? Be like, you saw what I fucking, dude, you know. That's all I got, dude. That's my goodbye. I was like, oh, I didn't I actually had that happen with a buddy. I had an acquaintance catch up where you run to somebody you haven't seen for a long time. And he should have known I wasn't ready to be a part of it when he was like, Adam. And I was like, man. And then I was like, look at you with your hat and your shirt looking all clothed and shit. And he was like, how you been? And I was like, all right, I'll do my part of the exchange, which is just keep it short and brief. I was like, hey, you know, put one foot in front of the other getting up with the sun, going to bed with the moon, just sounded like a Phil Collins song on every, <laughs> oh, right. every turn. And then he goes, uh, now it's my turn to reciprocate. And I go, well, how you, how you been? And he goes, how have I been? I was like, fuck, this is not going to be uh, oh, a, no. short, a short response. And I'm going to get pulled into something that I can't get out of. And he's like, I guess you haven't seen me since the accident. And I was like, uh -huh. no, what? And he was like, oh, God. over the summer, got my finger uh, caught in a jet ski rope, pulled off most of my finger, had to take skin from my knee and my neck, graft it onto my finger, just got feeling back about three weeks ago. So, you know, other than I'm that, great. pretty good. And I, <laughs> so now I just felt bad and I started, I don't know if you ever had been made to feel that inadequate or like, I, I feel, I felt like I, yes. I couldn't just go like, oh, we'll fucking see you later. You know, like I, I needed to come up with my own uh, casualties. So I was like, yeah, dude, I've been right. blinking a lot and sitting down to pee for no reason. And, just everything's like my, you know, my knees clickety clacking and like, you know, I'm just, I can't stop singing. The I talk like a pirate song. now. Apparently. I talk like a pirate. Yeah. <laughs> and, was, and, but it was, uh, but even like making jokes about that, like he, uh, and then he, and then it just like went on and I was like, man, I, I, I had nothing else to ask about because I, I just, we were such on the surface acquaintances that I was just like, hey, well, is that the only accident you were in? Are there other accidents? And he was like, <laughs> the fuck i was like i don't, I don't know anything about you um but but he's but now he's, i know one tr very very traumatic thing that changed yeah. your life forever that you say deal. to everybody when they it's ask how deal. you're doing although i feel like you know and yeah. again i think if you go through something traumatic like that you gotta bring it up like in a jet ski accident he had a good he was like i can't complain and i was like actually you can i think that's actually a pretty uh you know, deserving time to Yelp review to the world about how you, you've got your finger fucking, you know, janked off. Um, is that a word? Uh, janked off? I'm looking I now. Like that's what a yes. cool dad tries to tell his son when he got a hand job at an Uber. He's like, I got janked off in the Uber. Did I tell you, Devin? And he's like, oh. <laughs> Are you doing jankies over there in your room, Devin? Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I Jeez. love it, but but yes, janked off. I feel like could be a word. It it's could be going. hashtag it after this episode. The new the new Adam Ray perfume or cologne. Janked Ooh, jank, off. janked off. I'm in. I'm in. Yeah, get twenty percent. <laughs> Promo code. Well, Adam, jank, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Promo code. Jank now. Now jank. Jank now. I don't know. So anyway, Adam, I was going to ask to promote. What have you got going on? Um, where can people follow you? The Crowdwork album's out December 11th. Adam Ray Comedy on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, tour dates AdamRayComedy.com and podcast about last night. And that's it for now. And then Young Rock comes out February, NBC. Woo, woo. Cool. I. That's awesome. Adam, thank you so much. And um, hopefully I'll see you sometime soon. Dude, good Great. to see you, man. Thanks for hitting me up. Yeah, absolutely. Take Three finger salute, baby. There we go. <laughs> Double. Later, doggy. <laughs> All right. Later, man. See you, bud. Bye-bye. <laughs>